Okay. Where to start? So, um, as most people know, um, over at Nathan Oakley's channel for the last, oof, it's not even been weeks, it's been months overall, there's been um, this ongoing situation with Anthony Riley and um, the Isle Man observations and stuff like that. And um, I want to go over some of the, the observations that I've got. I don't want to take too long, if possible. But I've just kind of thrown some stuff into a folder here and I'll, I'll try and kind of go over some basic stuff. So really, <clears throat> um, I guess we'll start with a wee bit of background on it, which is um, obviously Nathan uh, originally started up his open debate channel and it actually started off quite well and he got a lot of support from people um, from the so-called globe side. Um, myself included, um, people at Tim Osman and stuff like that were encouraging and or supporting it. I mean, it's kind of funny looking back in it, but, you know, I take a lot of screenshots sometimes when I interact with certain people online and I can even go back and, and show examples of me defending them for, <laughs> for no shouting at people and, uh, you know, muting and kicking them and stuff like that, like other channels would do. So it kind of started off well, it was moderated reasonably well, um, so that was fair enough. But as time wore on, unfortunately, it kind of, things changed in there. And the, the two main things that really changed was that, um, obviously, Anthony Riley started showing up and pushing all his nonsense. And um, it kind of devol devolved, more or less, into the the Nathan and Riley show pretty much and on top of that Nathan could no longer control himself and his attitude completely changed and he started you know berating everybody shouting swearing muting people you know exhibiting double standards allowing Anthony Riley to get away with breaking the rules while he was punishing other people instantly for doing the same things all that kind of stuff and <clears throat> while there were certain um, arguments going on covering subjects like refraction, the Isle of Man observations and you know prior to that there was like Anthony was just going through this list of these old stupid flat earth memes that he was just bringing up all these stupid subjects and arguing ad nauseum about them and you know he was going into all kinds of uh, silly ideas like uh, you know, he brought up the Curie point thing with magnetism and, uh, you know, just such old arguments, trying to drag them out and make something of them. But while all that was going on, what was happening was is that the hangouts were, you know, that Nathan would run his hangouts for two hours and then bugger off, Lily would bugger off. But a lot of people would hang around in the background. The hangout itself, would, you know, the Google Hangout would run around in the background and people would hang about back there. Some people even restreamed it and stuff like that. So people were still talking about all this stuff in the background. And um, when everything started to get out of hand with Nathan's attitude, plenty of people were, you know, talking about it for a long time and saying they, you know, already discussing the fact that, they, that it was just bullshit and they shouldn't go back in there. So... Unfortunately, some people couldn't control themselves and they went back and they were still talking about it. But um, when it came to where it had hit the stage where all oh, this Isle of Man shit was kind of kicking off and people were, you know, screaming and shouting at each other and Nathan was doing his bit defending Riley and shouting at people and stuff like that. Um, that general attitude and the, the idea behind, you know, just leaving Nathan and Riley to, to get on with their own thing was already, you know, in discussion for weeks, basically. Um, for me personally, I just decided I couldn't be bothered with it. It's from day one, when I seen the, the, the video on the Isle of Man, I just wasn't interested in it. Um, just thought it was, a, you know, a poor observation. You know, he, he never took a tripod. He, he went up and did it by hand. 
it's a quick sweep around and, and he, you know, he never repeated it or anything like that. Um, it took so much manipulation to modify the image and get a look at it and people were spending so many hours analysing it and stuff like that. So, you know, it, it was kind of weird to me. You had what I would consider a fairly unremarkable um piece of video to work with that people were spending so much time talking about it and I personally wasn't really that interested in it and in these back chats uh, I had some conversations with people that were involved in it and I said as much and I encouraged people to forget about it and you know no give Nathan and Riley the pleasure of constantly going back on every day to, to you know to just go through the ringer with all these you know those stupid rules um, the, the, you know, the rules they held for everybody else that they didn't stick with for themselves. Um, sorry, getting a wee bit distracted just now. So anyway, the point is, everything had kind of went to shit. People were still arguing about the Isle of Man, and I, I wasn't taking anything to do with it. But um, I ended up, Miles Davis was going to take a trip to St B's and I got asked if I could help out by um, showing up and taking the P900 so that was what I did and that was really you know that was my main role was just to show up with a camera um, a lot of people seemed to be under the impression that me and Miles had hooked up and we were going to go and debunk Riley and stuff like that well Miles was basically doing stuff off his own back and I was just tagging along to help out and even when I met up with Miles I told him that if, if it wasn't for just agreeing to help him that I would never have went to St B's. But with things being the way they were by that point, um, you know, for my part I wasn't interested in, in going anywhere near Nathan's show. Evening Paul, how you doing? Um Aye, so at this point I was just, I had no interest in going back to Nathan's show at all. I'd, as I say, I'd already been speaking to people and saying that they shouldn't waste their own time going back to Nathan's show. Shouldn't give them the satisfaction, shouldn't give them the attention, shouldn't allow them to spin the drama and get the views and all that kind of stuff. <clears throat> um, so, by the time I met up with Miles down at St B's, as far as I was concerned, any material that came out of that, the last thing that should happen with it is it should go back to Nathan and Riley over on Nathan's show. You know, they just didn't, they didn't deserve it. Anything that came out of it should just be, you know, if you want to debunk Riley or whatever, then go ahead, do it on your own channel. How you doing, Adam? Um, and just, you know, don't give, it, give these idiots your, your time. Hello. Um, if you give me a minute, I'll get to that. I'm just kind of trying to give the background at the moment, and if you can probably see on screen, I've got some stuff here, so I'll I'll get to that stuff in a minute. If you just hang about. Um. So I what was saying? So so basically, for my part, I wasn't interested in coming back to the the show, or taking any information I had from here and bringing it to the show. Uh, didn't you think anybody like Miles? It didn't matter who it was should um, waste their time going back on Nathan's show, basically. So, uh, Miles had already had his own idea about what he wanted to do with the information. He wanted to go the analysis route. He wanted to take his time and do a series of videos. And, and that, if anybody's been following this stuff, they'll know that's exactly what Miles has been doing. And me, I was happy to just sit in the background, let Miles do his thing. Excuse me. And... And of course, there were other people getting involved in trying to debunk this Isle of Man stuff and whatever. So obviously, you've got Rumpus, uh, Paul Voy, Sly Sparkane, and a few others have you know taken the time and trouble to try and do analysis using uh, software essentially. And of course, the guys themselves did the same thing. They got Chris Monk involved and did some crazy CGI nonsense with it. Um, so this was this was all. How's it going? Good to see you. Um, so, you know, everybody was taking their shot at trying to do all the, the kind of analysis side. Um, I was happy to share any material that I had that was any use um, with people who were, were making videos or whatever they wanted to do with it. 
but there was there was never any real sort of major intention with me to, to go to my way to try and do stuff with this but because I'd got involved <clears throat> and obviously have some material here I have to obviously show some of that but um, I think the thing about it is is that for the most part people have been working with analysing um, through things like Google Earth doing bearings and things like that whereas obviously I've got a wee bit of actual um, you know, photos, videos, whatever. No, no, a crazy amount, but enough to just look at a couple of things. Um, so the other side to no going back to to Nathan's and stuff like well as well is because it was for me it was a wee bit of a social experiment. Um, rather than you know, I, even if I had wanted to go on to Nathan's show and share any information, I would much rather that they were given some time to see how they would get on with, you know, how they would behave, basically, and see how things panned out, rather than going straight back there. And <clears throat> that's been a couple of weeks now. And I think it's been very interesting to watch how these guys have behaved. If anybody's been following it, I think they should understand that as well. The, you know, seeing the way that they were so excited and so desperate to go ahead and, and tell everybody what they'd achieved without verifying it. You know, they'd, they'd become the bells of the ball. You know, they were appearing in all the shows like the Hot Potatoes and stuff like this. Uh, you know, and Riley saying ridiculous things, like he's trying to make himself out to be some kind of adventurer when all he did was pick up a camera, scan around for a couple of seconds and then put it back down again. It was, you know, it's been really interesting and like both hilarious and sad to watch how things have been going with this lot and a lot of people have been push, you know pushing them well when are you going to go to the, the mainstream media and try and get this information out because they're acting as if it's the find of the century <clears throat> but obviously none of that's happened so i think stuff like that's kind of telling because it really that you know that weekend what people don't know uh, about that weekend for me personally it was that was a weekend of observation for me so I met up with Miles on the Sunday but I was already out on the Saturday to do other stuff so that, that was my plan for the weekend was to do some kind of observations it was two good days of good weather so one way or another I would have been out with my camera doing this kind of stuff so meeting up with Miles wasn't really going out my way how's it going Miles? so um, I actually have a combination of stuff that was taken on the Saturday and the Sunday and uh, this really you know it wasn't a priority for me as I say this is just stuff I happened to have Miles was working with it, Rumpus was able to use some of it etc and um, knew that the the circus has had a bit of time to play out I thought you know I'd maybe just quickly go over a, a, just a couple of things um, <clears throat> So, while well, Riley and uh, the guys like Paul Voigt and stuff like that have been having their, their big back and forth, I think one of the things to note is to just how much backtracking or backsliding or whatever you want to call it, um, Anthony Riley has done. Nathan has jumped on board. He, he likes to just throw out slogans for the most part and just shout people down and you know just back Riley and whatever he says. But Riley, when you watch, if you bothered to watch the way some of this uh, has, has transpired, you'll see the way that Riley constantly shifts the goalposts, constantly changes minds about what he, he supposedly believes or disbelieves. One of the biggest uh, bones of contention through the debates, whether they were talking about Isle of Man or no, just in general, was refraction, which has always been a thing that Anthony Riley has you know, bitched about constantly, he pursued Mick West and called him a fraud, he accused soundly of being a fraud and that the curvature on Lake Poncher train was due to refraction, yet on the other hand he'll turn around and try and deny that refraction's even a thing. And then when it suits his narrative because he's been questioned on issues with the imagery that he's produced, he's happy to turn around and say that refraction is causing problems with it, you know. So it's it's really a joke to watch all this and what's interesting to me is it doesn't matter how many times that guy changes his tune, 
all the flat earthers just jump straight on board because they believe that he's produced something that shows you flat earth. They don't, they don't care, you know, they're no obviously paying attention or really just don't care. You know, they, maybe they just don't have the morals, who knows, but they're really no interested in the truthfulness, the honesty yet. So, um, you know, I think all that stuff's been interesting. And uh, as, as there's a few subjects like that where it's come up. Refraction's just a big one with, with these people because it applies so much to what they're involved in. Um, anyway, I think we'll maybe get into that a bit in a minute, so better stop whittling on about the background. So um, when I met up with Miles, it was a it was a nice day, it was a cold uh, winter day, it was very sunny and, and generally clear, but it was a low sun and looking at over the water uh, towards the Isle of Man, it was actually quite hazy over there. And there was uh, two problems with that. One was that looking at the Isle of Man wasn't that easy just in general because of the haze it seemed to be under. And then on top of that, you had the the other side to it, which was that you couldn't e even look at your camera, really, and see the, the, what you were looking at, you know, the, the viewfinder or whatever was so washed out with the sun, it was really difficult to actually even see what the camera was picking up. You know, if you were doing sort of close stuff, you can maybe get away with it, but trying the combination of struggling to see in the sunlight and then the actual haze over the island, it was really difficult to see. Um, when I first came back, sorry, I'm kind of jumping ahead of myself, when I first got there, I did a couple of quick pans. It was basically, I stopped at one point, did a quick pan around, just to establish where I was and look at the height, and then moved up to where the observation was, did the same thing again, excuse me, and I combined the two of those very quickly and sent them to Jem Panda, who was having a hangout at the time. And that was just to give them something to, to look at, to compare for height, so they could have a wee chat about that if they wanted to. And it's pretty much anybody's seen from my point of view. Um, so let me see, I've got this. So I'll show you what I'm talking about here. Oh, wrong one. Excellent, good start. Give me a second, went to the wrong one. That's one, sorry. Right, so I'll show you exactly where this is in a second. But if you pay before I let the, the video run, if you just pay attention to the features here, you can already tell where we're standing here. There's some a fair amount of elevation, and you can see these posts running down to the beach in this uh, green pole at the end, which is quite high. It's obviously well above the height of the people here, and everything. so just bear that in mind. So it's a good marker for when we're looking at um, another angle. But this was just a look around, and. Obviously, the, one of the you know the big bone of contention was concerning elevation. Now you can see where I'm standing there in that car park, and that's looking towards a cafe. You can see that the tide is out, and you know that's the step that I'm actually basically standing on. And then we look over to the left here. This is obviously where Anthony was originally standing. So just pause this a second, and there we go. So, you can see there's already a, a person up there, but this bit here, where it sticks out, this is where this, the next piece of video will be taken from. And that is where, if you look through the camera, you get the, the same view. I mean, if you're standing on the path, essentially, you get the same view as what Anthony Riley got in the video that he put out. And then just for doing the actual observation, who stood on this part here. And I'll come back to this kind of view in a minute because I want to ex uh, use part of this to explain about the height measurements, which I will get to in just a wee minute, if you just bear with me. But basically you're looking at this area here oops, yeah, as uh, the observation point for Anthony's video, and I'm at a lower elevation standing in this car park. And you can see there's a fair bit of height here. That was the purpose of looking down like that, to try and give you a sense of it. 
no. Give me a bit of a second. I think I zoom in on the Isle of Man here. Yeah, there you go. So you can see it's kind of hazy. You can make out the profile, but it's, it's fairly hazy. And you can actually see the kind of flashes of light off of some stuff there. But when you were actually doing that on the day through the camera, you, you really couldn't make any of this stuff out. You could barely see that you could see the island. And I only I panned so far and then zoomed back out. So that's whatever, right? But so this is moving up to the, the elevation point that I just pointed out. You can see it matches the view that everybody's familiar with from Anthony's video. And if you just pause it here, so there's the green pole I was talking about. Where these guys are standing here that's at the step and if you look carefully you can kind of see the line which is the path running down there and then the cafe obviously in the back now if you look at this overall and compare you know just look at the different heights you can see for example you know the difference between the base the, the, the cafe being higher up here the step being pretty high up above the beach that there's a slope to the beach and things like that. As say if you use that pole as reference, you can see again the size of people compared to you know the, the pole and stuff like that. So each time there's there's you know there's a fair difference in the elevation as you look at it. Just let it sweep round here. So you know I think anybody looking at this believing that it's thirty five feet has got to be off their head. I don't care what your excuses are to say that it's thirty five feet here. You're, you're either lying to yourself or you're not very clued up. But this was much the same. It was just a scan around to get a feel for the place. So I'm just going to close that. Um, so that gives you a general idea of the lay of the land. I've just got a photograph here. It'll just allow me to zoom in a wee bit. Give you a bit more detail than the video. And maybe give you, a, you know, just a wee bit better idea of scale. So this is the, the, the cafe that I was pointing at. You can make it in the photograph. There's a set of steps running down here and there's people walking down the steps. Then you've got this kind of concrete running along here. Then it goes into the beach. Then it slopes down uh, over the pedals and then onto the sand. And I'll show you, I'll show you a kind of... Um, Google Earth kind of version of that, just so you've got a better idea of the layout as well. Flat Owl, can you just give me a wee minute? I, I'm trying to give an idea of the layout, so you, the I'm, I'm getting to the measurement thing in just a second, just trying to give an idea of the layout here. Um, let me see. So... With regard to the measurements, Miles did his own thing, and I was need to say I was really only meant to be there for a camera, but obviously I thought I would get a shot while I was there. So there was a couple of methods. This was one of them, right? I had borrowed this, and this is my helper, and I'm standing. You can tell I'm down the slope of the beach next to these boards, as I was pointing out a minute ago from the side view, and that's the step I was originally standing at. Now the perspective, the angle that I'm looking at here makes it look as if this is higher than the step. That isn't the case. It's actually much lower, which you'll see in a second. But this photo is just good reference to see the height of the thing. This um, stick, this measuring stick, it's, a, it's 16 and a half feet tall. And you can see that the person uh, that's holding it for me is standing here on this uh, concrete base which has like got a, a stank on it or whatever and uh, you know you see the rocks start to the right of this concrete pl um, plinth and uh, the reason I'm pointing these things out is just so you've got frames of reference when you look at other views and uh, so where are we so then let me just let this load up right so as you can see, that's me standing on the beach, just looking around and getting, a, you know. But I kind of spin round to the right here. Just let me skip in a bit. Right. So now, again, this is the, the area that we're standing up on, and this gives you an idea of the slope of the beach. Because there's a big difference between the actual 
height from the cliff top to the cliff base and how much extra height is added in with the slope of the beach and then down to the actual sand because I'm still standing on the pebbles here. So that was just, you know, to make sure you have got some kind of frame of reference for that there. Then I did try to climb up now. This is a crap piece of video. I was basically had the camera on while I was climbing. And it's probably going to be too fuzzy to see, but even though I'm not at the top yet, when the camera spins around quickly, you can sort of tell that I'm already, you know, I'm actually above the level of the stick here, and I'm a bit just over halfway up. I tried to stop and take a shot level with it, but the, the, there was too much gravel and it was kind of steep, so I started sliding down the hill, so I ended up just walking up. But it was just to kind of point out that before I've even reached the top of this, I was, um, you know, above the level of it and then I walk up to the top but then obviously I you know just went up to the top and looked down so let me just put that on oops that's the wrong one same one again right there you go so I went back up to the steps which you obviously recognised from a minute ago this time you know Standing with the stick down there. And now you can see what I'm talking about. I'm having to look down at a fair angle still to look down at the, the top of this. And as I say, that's 16 and a half feet. So this should give you the idea that you're talking about... Uh, if, if you were just taking a rough guess at the height, just standing at the step here, you're going to have to say to yourself, well, minimum 20 feet, probably 20-something feet, you know, realistically. And that's to this concrete here. No, that doesn't include the extra height down onto the pebbles. And then, as I've pointed out, there's still slope to get down to the sand. So this is why, even though you, you can't get a direct line of sight with the top of this thing, it still you know, gives you an idea. So that's just getting closer with the level of the step. I'm still having to angle down to see it. Alright, so you get the idea of what the view is like from the step, and it's clearly at least... Oh. See you later, Miles. Um, so you're getting, you know, you're getting the idea that there's a, a fair bit of height here, and I haven't even, um, that's not even up at the cliff. Um, where are we? Let me just see where I'm up to. Right, so then, just again for some reference to that, this is down on the beach, and that's uh, where those rocks that come come along from there stop. And um, again, this will give you an idea of the difference if you look at the, the person and you look at the level of the land and stuff like that. This green, as I say, this green pole is a good marker. It's another way of getting a good feel for just how much difference there is in elevation between where the, you know, the way the land slopes, where it, it stops, the beach starts, and down to the actual sand. There's a fair bit of extra height involved when the tide is it. And you can see the base of the cliffs there. So you could easily go here and measure the wrong part of the cliff because obviously if you go to different parts, you're going to get different heights anyway. And you could fool yourself that you've got, say, 30 or 40 feet or whatever it is just on the cliff and tell everybody that's where you were. But it's a totally unrealistic representation of the overall height. And that's the point of all of this. So this was a, just a test. I'd obviously had moved down to the beach and done some stuff. And this um, is me sitting right below the point where we did the observations up here. And it's deceptive looking in the, the photograph. I think it doesn't look as high when you're looking up at it that way. But I've got a bit of video to match with this that I did like a pan while it was stationed here. And what I did was I measured the height of the camera and the tripod and it was five feet. So I'm down the slope a bit. I've got it at five feet high. And when you see the video in a second, you'll see that it's basically pointing roughly just here, just a, you know, a foot or two at the, a, above the base, basically. So let me get that in a second. Right. So that's this video here, and 
I just do like a like a seven twenty pretty much. It's just, again, this was just to establish how the place was laid out and what the height, different heights were like. So cameras at five feet, you can see if you're looking at center frame, it's more or less level with this base part of the cliff. And there's still all of this to go. You know, you can see when I, when I pan round back to uh, in front of me that there's um, you know, still a bit of height to go between where that camera's sitting, looking at the base of the cliff and where those people are down below me. So, you know, you get the idea. Again, quickly zoomed in towards the, uh, the Isle of Man and just, I'll stop that there just to kind of gain an idea how hazy it did look. So, you know, you can see this is why the daytime stuff, there's not a lot of daytime stuff because this is how it looks when we look at it on a, on a PC after the fact. At the time, we can even really make out most of this through the, it was really, you know, you're just about being able to make it like an edge. So we kind of figured we were wasting our time, to be honest. The haze was kicking our ass. Um, but that's, you know, it's not the end of the story. This is just how it started off. So you get the idea. It's obviously, um, you know, when you look at the lay of the land, the place is higher than it, uh, you know, you might be fooled into thinking. Oh, how's it going, Chris? And Jed, I never noticed you earlier. How's it going? Good to have you here. Um, so now that, you know, you've got a bit of a feel for it, I'm just going to quickly show you this on Google Earth. <clears throat> so... This is the step where I was taking the video and looking out and where I had the, the guy standing with the measuring pole, which was 16 feet or whatever, and saying that it was, you know, as I say, your conservative estimate for standing on that step is 20 odd feet from the step to here. And it doesn't include the extra height for the beach. And then this is the, the observation point up on the cliff. And then looking back, uh, sorry for getting so you can see there as well that you know that's the path that's where the rocks start etc and this is where the camera was you know a second ago looking back this way now looking back this way you could see when I was looking at the car park the cafe and I pointed out the steps running down so when it comes to measurements which I'm about to, to get into unfortunately this bit of google is a bit crap what I've done is there's a set of concrete steps running down here then you've got the concrete that runs along and then it's just there's a kind of like there's a couple of lines just visible on this crappy google thing but basically there's a set of metal steps from the concrete down onto the pebbles then you've got the pebbles going down into the sand and what i've done is i've measured the height of the steps including the metal steps and then uh, measured the height from the base of the metal steps over to the the sand at the the height of the last post basically well from you know from the level of the steps out to the last post here onto the sand so i've got my height between the steps and the sand the height of the steps then the steps themselves are next to the cafe the cafe and the steps are not level so there's an extra bit of height between the steps themselves and the base of the cafe and then as you would have seen from the video a minute ago this car park is up at a higher level than the cafe so there's a, some height to measure between the base of the cafe and the car park. And then the last set of measurements is taking the height from the car park level up to the observation point. So that was the, the basic uh, overall sort of strategy for measuring. Is that's your measuring points that I've went through. So I hope that makes some kind of sense to you. Um... <clears throat> So what I did was uh, I used, for doing this section I did, instead of that stick obviously, I used a laser measuring tool. And the thing with the laser measuring tool is if you take some measurements with it, it's, it's, you know, it's designed to automatically power itself off after a short time. So the mate, I had to take the, the measure and then take a photograph as the, the measurements on the tool and then get onto my phone and write everything down in the phone. And it was my phone I was using to take the photographs of the thing before it went blank. 
So really, I only have a few pictures, uh, you know, random pictures of me taking various measurements because I needed to get them so I could jot them down on the phone. Um, so this here, St. B's measurements reduced, that's the final file that I produced with my measurements in it. But this was um, created and actually created in Google Docs. I've downloaded it, it's turned it into a Word document and I don't have Word or registered and shit so I've copied the information out of there and put it into a wee text file here. Now that reminds me actually, you notice that I've, it's St B's measurements reduced. Now that was one of the many ridiculous arguments that happened on Nathan's with that idiot Riley was um, trying to argue that it's reduced meant that they changed the size or something rather than just reducing the numbers down to a manageable figure. So like this, just to give you an example for the people that don't seem to get it, although I suspect Riley's either the only one that doesn't get it or was just intentionally being a twat. <coughs> it was um, basically, obviously originally I've had a lot more individual measurements. So just for example, you take say, 10 steps and they're all 10 inches each and you get 100 inches well you can write that as 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10 or you can reduce it down to 10 times 10 or you can reduce it further to 100 that's what reduction means when you're talking about numbers so as far as that argument goes you know, just one example of the stupidity that went on in Nathan's with Riley when he's in control so anyway if you can remember what I was basically just saying there about the layout of the place I've got a measuring, measurement from the steps, and that includes the metal steps, and then the area from the steps to the beach. So that's the steps, the beach, and then from the top of the steps up to the base of the cafe building, from the base of the cafe building up to the car park level. Then oh, I've totaled that up there, and then from the car park level up to the actual viewer height and what I've done is this might seem strange saying it like this it's a measurement based on increments of a specific amount but basically the the, the constant through the measurements was some and the the other person that was their height um, and <clears throat> so we were working our way up the hill doing it you know a person's height a person's height a person's height kind of thing and then added on five feet for a viewer height so with all that said and done, the final total uh, that I ended up with was this, which was 78 and a half feet. Now, for anybody think that might be a bit high, I think we need to look at um, other measurements that were made. So first of all, remember I added in 5 feet for viewer height. So if you take 5 feet off of that, you're doing to 73 feet. And then the other thing is, is that I measured some uh, extra elevation for the beach whereas other measurements that have been made didn't include that extra bit of height and I want to show you an example of that with miles just to show that things match up so miles he went down and he did he used dioptra to get angles and used trigonometry to do an, an estimation and when he put this video he, he did two types of measurement he did um, this one where he took a picture of me standing up on the cliff and then just, you know, multiplied it up. Uh, and let's see, he got this result, 66 feet. And then he did the actual, the thing with Dioptra. Oops, let me. And he got just over 66, 66 and a half feet is what he got there. So he's getting 66 feet using two different methods. One is using dioptra and trig, the other was doing a just, you know, multiplying a, a thing from the scene which happened to be me. And then if you look at my measurements again, uh, if you take off the viewer height, I'm at 73 feet. And then remember that I actually took in a, into account an extra few feet for the the beach. And we, with Miles, he's got his camera sat. Whoops, what happened there? What the hell? Ugh, adverts. God damn it. Give me a second. Right, so with Miles, he had his camera... God damn. 
It's not moving around. Right, there we go. His camera's sat on the, on the uh, I think it's one of the posts looking up at the cliff. So he's slightly down from these rocks. You know, he's not right down on the beach. So when you, when you tally that up, you've got three different uh, ways of measuring the height and they actually agree with each other. Because if you take off the extra for the viewer height and the extra that I added on for the beach, that makes mine about 65, 66 feet. So it's two completely, uh, three rather completely different means of measuring it. And they actually all agree with each other. So I think we can generally agree that for the first position, you're talking about an average of 65 to 66 feet. Let me just minimize that sec. So a flat owl, does that answer your question? You know, I've just showed you there that there was, the, you know, a couple of different ways of doing it. And the, the, the generally the sum total for that first position that, that Riley was at is 60 something feet. You know, you can allow, you can give or take a foot or two here and there. And that's for the first position. And then he's moved up to a higher position, which he tried to pretend he didn't do at first and then changed his mind and decided to tell everybody that he did move and stuff like that. Uh, give me a second, guys. So, can you still hear me okay? So that was good again. Uh, I think I, I think I caught a wire. Getting quite a high pitched buzzing noise in the ears, mind you. Two seconds, I'll see if I can sort it. Right, has that stopped it? Are they any better now? seem right. Right. Okay, excellent. <sighs> right, where were we? So, everybody happy with the measurement situation? How it was done, the areas that were measured and what the result was and the fact that it marries up with, you know, other people's measurements that were done independently? Here 
any sound. Right, so as I was saying, that it was pretty uh, hazy during the day. So I've got a couple of photographs just to kind of demonstrate how it did look. Um, so believe it or not, that's the end of the island. And the only way you're going to see something here is by doing a bit of the contrast on it. I can just kind of give you a quick example. You can sort of just make it, there's like a building here. Uh, let's see. It's kind of hard to get the right balance of this, but it, the point is you can just about make out a shape running down here. You can just about make out a light patch here. And if you look really carefully, there's a kind of blob here. There's a gap in between. There's a wee blob. This is just a, a blemish on that camera. You can just ignore that. Um, you know, so we looking through the camera, as I say, it was pretty hard to to see. And this is what the pictures were turning out like. You know, you can see there's something there, but it's pretty hazy. Um, it looks actually looks better than you you would have thought it looked on the day. So for daytime, it wasn't the best, but you can actually see some features here. And I think if we had realised that it was picking it up a bit better at the time we probably would have spent more time uh, taking pictures during the day because if you do a bit of contrast on it you can make out some of this stuff so i think maybe if you know taking like more photographs during the day and stacked them up and stuff like that maybe it could have turned out pretty well but uh, nobody realized that at the time um but th the difference is is that we didn't just go take one picture or one for uh, video and then piss off you know, we took a few different photographs to kind of get the lay of the land, did all that kind of stuff. Um, and we hung about until night time, basically. So we got, we, we went on into the evening where everything cleared up and we got the sunset. And I forgot to mention, Miles has done a video on this and I'm not going to concentrate on it too much. But there was turbines in the water and this is what the, one of the, the kind of main feature that stood out if you looked across the water. You could just about make this out was this uh, area here we thought it was a rig at first but when you look at it closely you can see there's a couple of turbines there and after a bit of investigation we think that this is a turbine under construction in the background <clears throat> and that's what that looked like you know kind of during the day just for a bit of comparison there but it was to say we stayed into the the evening so in the evening Oh, I've skipped ahead. Sorry, guys. Give me a wee second. I've missed one of the most important things. So in the last couple of weeks, when I've been making appearances in the chat in the Nate and Nate's uh, show, obviously Nathan and Riley just couldn't shut up talking about Miles and Al Kay and when they're going to release their information and stuff like that. And Riley, being the kind of person he is, he likes to run his mouth off and he kept trying to say to me that what I would or wouldn't see. In fact, he spent a lot of time saying that I definitely couldn't see certain things, and I, I, you know, I don't know where he gets these stupid ideas from, considering he's no idea what people have seen and what they've got. But one of his uh, specific challenges to me when I was in the chat was he was telling me that I wouldn't be able to get what he calls the floaty land to the the right. So this is, as I say. I was unable to tell while I was taking this video that it was actually out of focus a bit. But although it moves around a bit, you'll be able to see that I'm scanning up to the north of the island. And uh, this, so this is during the day. It's at the same observation height as Riley was at for his first video. And it's at low tide, so the conditions generally match. You can see the same thing, that the island disappears at the point where Ramsey is. There's nothing to be seen there. And then, let me just pause that. No, don't. It's hard to get it paused and get a good picture, but you get the idea. This is, if you've been looking at all this stuff, you'll recognise what you're looking at there. This is the uh, kind of cliff area where it starts back up again. God, this fucking band is really annoying. There you go. So exactly the same. You can see that you've got these sections of land, exactly the same bits that, that Riley caught when he was scanning up to the, the right. 
We'll just play that through again there. This thing that keeps popping up at the bottom is really annoying. So, same thing, you can see the north, some of the northern parts of the, the island there. Just the same as in Riley's video. Um, <clears throat> no, it wasn't exactly the same. When the when I added a couple, I, I, I know you can't make it. That first picture I showed you, you, you can't make it too well, but it, it stops roughly here. There's a wee tiny blob here that suggests it's sticking up. But while all of the discussions have been going on about all this stuff, it seems to be that this is another one of the weird kind of twisted uh, pieces of bullshit that's come out of it, is this, that Riley will claim that the bit to the north is Ireland. When he first did his video, he says, is it Scotland? Then Miles Davis called him out on it and said that it was just the Isle of Man and that the gap in the middle was the lowland area after Ramsey. And he was spot on. He was really the first person to call him out and get it, you know, and pull him up on this Isle of Man stuff. And <clears throat> Riley totally denied that. And then through the, the arguments that he has, was having with people like Paul Voigt and stuff like that, or Nathan's, he was constantly changing his tune about whether it was Scotland and Ireland and whether it was the north of the Isle of Man and blah, blah, blah. But he spent so much time trying to deny that this land to the north was part of the Isle of Man. And that where it cut off the main body of the island at Ramsey was actually Ramsey. And in his own video, he even identified the stuff to the north as Bride. He did that himself at one point, even though he then went back and tried to claim it was Ireland. Then, when he had a conversation with this guy, Paul, I think it was, the guy from the Isle of Man, he turns around and agrees with him. He says, oh, do you agree this bit is Ramsey, the bit where it first dips away? And, you know, so... He, He's constantly switching and changing his mind right from day one, whether it's Isle of Man, Scotland, or Ireland, or whatever else he wants to make up. And he even identified part of it to the north as the Isle of Man himself by identifying Bride. So, you know, he's just all over the place and he's so full of shit. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So, I was able to get what he calls the floaty land. It was... Um, you know, much the same conditions, it was a sunny day, it was reasonably clear but hazy over the island, um, low tide and same observation height and all that stuff. But we hung around, as I say, into the evening and we set up on the step. So, so just taking this picture to, to, you know, show the overall view so you can see the sun setting. You can see the Isle of Man in silhouette in the back. We've got the camera set up on the step and you can see that the tide is in. And just another view so that you've got, you know, the place in question. Uh, I just want to come back to the measurement thing for a wee minute while I've got this photograph up. So as I was saying, I took measure various measurements and I worked my way up to the car park, then measured from the car park up to here and added in an ob observer height. But for anybody that's that's got any doubt about the differences in all these different heights and all these features of this area, you can just look at this wee bit to get a good idea uh, of just how much height difference there can be between a couple of areas. So you've got the car park level. This post at the corner, which you can see, doesn't it? It doesn't start right on the, the tarmac it's you know there's a bit of land a wee bit of mound a grass and then the post is here and the height from the you know the, the the tarmac to the top of that post is just over five feet now if you just take round that down and say that this is five feet and then you can remember everybody i'm sure can remember that they, at one point these um caravan things were getting used as a, a means of measurement and they were talking about them being something like 12 or 13 feet so let's say again conservative 12 feet well right there from that tarmac to the peak of that you get 17 feet but you're supposed to believe that standing you know up here down to there and then including all the stuff i've already showed you with all the slope of the beach and everything is only 35 feet so you know just to hammer that one home a wee bit there Uh, 
So then this is what the turbines looked at night. This was just a wee comparison to the daytime shot. Now most people shouldn't need to explain to them that the, the advantage to wait until sunset is that now you've got the, the light behind everything. So anything that should be visible because it's there, just because it's there, It'll all be lit up from the back in a nice silhouette. You can see there the sun's still shining partially on one side of these. They're all silhouetted. They're nice and easy to see. And, you know, as I say, it shouldn't take too much to understand that anything like that would be well lit up. Now, this is a wee pan that I did with the camera from the top of the step. And it just shows you everything that here. So I say Miles has done a, a fairly good um, you know, length video on the turbines. I don't want to talk about them too much to know, but this was one of the, the many features of St. B's that just tells you the full story about what you're seeing, whether you can see examples of curvature of the earth versus whether it's flat. And it just pokes so many holes in, you know, these guys' stories. There is a massive series of uh, turbines out in this water and every single one of them is sitting down behind the horizon and they're at all different uh, distances so obviously some of them are really low in the horizon and stuff like that. And then as you scan across uh, you've got the the sun setting over here and then when you, he when you head over to the island in a second, just gives a minute till it passes the sun. So once the island comes into view, there we go. So now, again, anybody that's been following this will recognise that this is the infamous tuft of trees. And there's nothing else that you can see along this line. Whereas in, in their photographs, you've got this extra land here. Um, you could see, obviously, in the, the earlier bit of video that I showed that I did get the same result up to the north during the day, but then you get the same result to the south during the day, but there was a bit more than what you can see here. Now, <clears throat> this is later in the day, everything's lit from the back, so if there was any land there, you'd see it. And also, we're at a lower elevation, which on flat earth wouldn't have made a difference, especially when you're as high as I've already established that step is. It's not like we're right down at the water. But, um, you know, so if there was really just land jutting out here and it could just be seen, this would be the time you see it. It would all be lit up from the back and you'd see the silhouette, but there's nothing there. <clears throat> um, even even at this time when, all, when everything's in silhouette, you can still see some of the curiosity effect that I was talking about, which was one of the things that um, you know was severely missing from the purported... Irish stuff, which is that, you know, there wasn't this huge difference in contrast. Now, just quickly, well, let's pass there. So this is the bit I was talking about a minute ago. This is, you know, the land disappears and it's coming around into Ramsey. And um, this is something, as I say, he's it's been disputed with Miles that this is where the Isle of Man ends. That Scotland was supposedly up here. Then it changed to Ireland being up here. And despite uh, trying to, you know, one minute deny refraction, next minute use refraction, stuff like that, these people are trying to claim that to the right and to the left you can see for 100 miles or more, yet somehow this area of the Isle of Man, <clears throat> which is much closer, is magically hidden. It's just such nonsense. And how do they do it? By trying to recreate the concept of refraction. Calling it dirty air. The, the dirty air thing's laughable anyway, but um, I'm going to show some examples of what's really going on with that stuff, just to show that they're, you know, just how stupid they're being about it. So that was a, that was a scan run towards St. B's head, and, uh, oh God, you know, it's basically, there's nothing visible here, whereas earlier in the day I'd managed to catch the the lower line pieces of land that it was claimed to be Ireland, none of it is here. And I'm way, way past it by the time I catch up with the boat which is coming across the water. So completely different results. Right. 
So before I get on to the refraction thing, I'm just going to, uh, I'm going to want to show you a couple of things. This is, um, uh, it was, do you know what? It was a really, it was a stunning night. And that was one of the things that we were a wee bit kind of too busy going, ooh, ah, and taking really nice photographs. <clears throat> to be, you know, but there's a lot of other stuff that you can look at if you're, um, you know, I've, I've got other material there that's related to all this subject, but it's not really related specifically to the claims about Ireland. So I'm not going to waste my time talking about that, but I've got some nice photographs and, and video. It's quite nice. Um, so... Before I go into the next wee thing, I want to show you guys something. Now, I shared, did share this in the hopes that it might be shown. Um, it, it never really made it to light. So, As I was saying earlier, on that weekend, I was doing various observations, not just in at St. Bees. Uh, right. Now, as you can see by the title, what we're looking at here is, I'll just skip it back a wee bit. So, the picture qualities, because I've, I've rendered these two clips together and rendered them out in a program, it's a wee bit blockier than it is in the original form, but you can still see everything well enough. So, what you're looking at here is the, the same kind of time of day, and this is the day before. And this is down at Troon, looking across towards Arran. And this dark area here is Holy Isle, which sits in front of Ireland, front of, Ireland, front of Aaron, sorry, Jesus. And there's a lighthouse on it. Now, if I let it play, oh, there's the lighthouse there. And you'll see a couple of flashes from it in a minute. You see there's a big, long, you know, period of time where it doesn't flash, and then you get two flashes. And then it just goes back to, to staying off for however long, 30 seconds or whatever it is. And then over here, you've got a place that sits out in the water called Lady Isle, which also has a lighthouse on it, and that's just got a constant beacon, as you can see. Now, this is the same place, and this is at night time. So this is the constant beacon of Lady Isle here. And if you just know, there was, there was two flashes when it very first started for the Holy Isle Beacon. And if you wait, it'll come back up again. There we go. That's your two for Holy Isle. The other light in the background is just a car driving. So this is what you should expect to see if you're looking at lighthouses at night. And obviously they've got specific patterns. And I know one of the bones of contention we um the Isle of Man was over the Moghold or Mackhold or whatever lighthouse. And the advantage to you know, the, the whole point of staying back at night was to see partially to see what we could see at night, because obviously if, if again if the claim is you can see everything just because it's there, just because it's flat, then obviously we'd expect to be able to see the lighthouses at night. <clears throat> so this for me this is my personal uh, to me this tells you the story you need even when you put aside all the other stuff so this was just starting off looking at some things and trying to focus the camera and stuff like that and you can see you know the turbines are lit up now because it's night time you can see all the red lights flashing on them and if I skip it in and look at the island let me just find the right bit okay so, what you're actually seeing here, some people might think that this is a lighthouse down here. This is a car driving. This is a light that stayed on for so long and then went off, but I don't stay looking at it the entire time for this clip. But um, if you look up the, the information on Mac Old Lighthouse, it, do, it does... Um, a three flash signal every 30 seconds excuse me according to the lighthouse board and this isn't even in the position that the lighthouse would be in if you look at the image which i can bring up in a minute if you want for reference the lighthouse isn't positioned here you know if you look at it in reference to the hills this is, this is the wrong location anyway so this is a car 
this is a light that just stayed on for a while. It could have been a car sitting parked somewhere or something like that. I don't know, but we'll just let it run for a second and let you see how it looks. So you can tell this is pretty much staying in the same place, but this one's kind of moving around. So what we're looking for here, obviously, at night time is two things. Signs of lighthouses doing, you know, specific flashes in the night. These are all cars. They all move, they all disappear. Uh, and then obviously signs of civilization. If we can see a car headlight driving down a road, um, then we should be expect to be able to see signs of life. Because the, the other claim is that we can see Douglas and Balakanel and all that kind of stuff. So again, if it's just there because everything's flat, then at night we'd expect to see the place lit up. So let me just skip it in a bit. Right, so now moving over towards the infamous Tuft of Trees area. So there's the Tuft of Trees here. And if you just watch this bit, there's, you know, there's no illumination anywhere in this entire bit. And then a car comes into view, so just up here, I think. If you just let it, if you just watch it for a second, you'll see a light start to appear. So we'll just bear with it. There we go. So there's a wee car on the Isle of Man, driving down one of the roads, reasonably high up. A wee bit of reflection off the water or whatever. Might just be part of the mirage, who knows. But you can see the car, you know, appearing and moving. Nothing at all over here. No lights at all. Right? So I've shown that there's no... Uh, flashes of lights in a pattern. You can see car headlights, so we know that we would expect to be able to see light if there was, um, you know, a lot of light being put off by anything. And if we look, at, remember that, and then look at the the stuff I've got here. This is another example taken at the same kind of time. This is sunset, and this is Greenock across the Clyde. Now, obviously, the camera's a bit closer to Greenock. But a lot of light there. And if we can see a car headlight, I would expect to see something similar to this when I'm looking at the Isle of Man, if there's a big town in my field of view. And then <clears throat> if you look here, here's a picture of Douglas at night. It's lit up like a fucking Christmas tree. There's various pictures there. You can see that they all look much the same. So this is how Douglas looks. You can see the silhouette. It's a, again, I would say it's a sort of similarish time of night. There's still a bit of light in the sky. You can see the silhouette of the hills where there isn't any light. And then where there is light, it's just like a, you know, it's like a Christmas tree, as I say. And then you compare that to what I just showed you. And tell me that that is supposedly looking at the whole uh, the Isle of Man, that Douglas is in view, or any big town is in view, that any lighthouses are in view, it's a load of bullshit. So you can see the difference there, it's a big, big, big difference. Now, as I was saying earlier, um, Riley has basically constantly went back and forth on this whole refraction thing. <clears throat> Excuse me. And, uh, oh, shout out to Shroomy. Um, so, aye, so Riley's went back and forth on the refraction thing. Nathan is jumping on board, trying to say, you know, he's using all these ridiculous statements uh, and phrases, catchphrases rather, you know, oh, we'd be behind a, a wall of water and all this kind of stuff. Riley has spent all his time trying to say that refraction the way it works on the, the the globe models, bullshit, and there's no such thing as refraction, while at the same time, if you question them on uh, why there's a big portion of the north part of the Isle of Man missing after Ramsey, he'll try and explain it on some kind of mirage or dirty air. You know, it, it, they just make it up as they go along. But um, there's a couple of points to make about this fucking refraction thing. So the first thing is, 
to hear the way you know Nathan and, and people at Riley behave, they make it. They they like to use the 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 kind of language that makes everything sound shocking. It's just the same as Eric Debay and all the Muppets that repeat them, saying, "Oh, if you're spinning at a thousand mile per hour," and you know they they like to try and use this emotive language to convince you that something's really really crazy when actually it's pretty mundane. So. <clears throat> Uh, let me see what have I done. What have I done with this? Let me just find the right folder. So I've got this picture here. Air protractor. Just to kind of point out how ridiculous they're being. So the earth is 25,000, just shy of 25,000. In circumference, miles in circumference, and that works out to about 69 miles per degree. So from here to here on the circumference of the Earth would be 69 miles, and the furthest point on the Isle of Man is something like, what, 51, 52 miles? So you're talking about from here to about here is actually the amount of change that would need to be made from anything positioned back here for the light from it to reach round this big supposedly massive curve. That's how it really works. So just because we are really small and tiny in comparison to this, uh, the, you know, the radius of this thing or the circumference of this thing, you know, the measurements sound big to us, but it's, you know, how small we are on the planet, the uh, surface of the planet, is get absolutely... Fuck all today with how the physics behave on an object this size, and light doesn't have to make a massively drastic change in its angle to get from here to here, and that's why they always say that you know with refraction most things can be accounted for with like half a degree and stuff like that. You can see there it's for the the furthest point it's just over half a degree, and for the stuff that's closer it's within half a degree. So to say that the, the you know the kind of standard refraction calculations wouldn't they account for what's being seen in the photograph is just absolute bullshit. And um, <clears throat> the other side to that is this fucking dirty air bullshit. I'm sorry, it's just so frustrating that somebody get away with saying something that stupid. Um. So the way these people talk about it. And people are, you know, crazy enough to believe them. They make it seem as if there's kind of like a wall of some kind of unspecified type of air that somehow blocks light or some bullshit like that. But what they don't seem to be taking into account is, um, you know, the reality, the, the fact that for a start, all this stuff's been studied. The real whole reason that Riley can look up a, a fucking page, so many page long MIT article on refraction is because... Obviously, these things are well understood. And, you know, we have our uh, refractive indexes for, you know, all kinds of material. We use refraction, obviously, every day for optics and stuff like that. So to pretend that all this stuff doesn't work the way we're told is just insane anyway. But as far as... Um, where are we? Let me just find this folder I was going to look at. Oh, I in here, I think. So... Uh, <laughs> more popular than ever before. I don't think so. Um, so Riley wants, people at Riley, they want you to believe there's this big wall. Um, you know, I've had people telling me they think that somehow, uh, you know, it, it hides boats, it hides the sun and all this kind of stuff. And making it sound as if there's some kind of layer where light can he pass through it and it hides things from you. No, there's two sides to this. Going back to the point I just made about how refraction works and would raise, um, or no raise, but bring stuff around the curve, and Nathan's constant uh, hammering on this idea that you would have to somehow get it to raise this massive amount. Well, I've shown that it isn't really a massive amount. He's just exaggerating it from the perspective of this tiny wee human. And the other side of it is, is that he makes it sound impossible. Well, people have done experiments and stuff like that and shown, obviously, that light bends around corners or curves anybody can go out on a hot day and drive you know over a humpback bridge or over the, the brow of a, it's any kind of hill or something like that and see the effects 
a refraction right in front of their eyes and see stuff that's over that hill getting brought up over it and things like that. Um, what was the other thing? Oh aye, I nearly forgot. Nearly forgot to mention this. Riley and his constant fucking goalpost shifting and backsliding. Not only has he, uh, you know, trying to deny refraction and then come back to it and stuff like that, all through the discussions about refraction, he also relies on examples like this, the Skunk Bay footage, demonstrating refraction right in front of them. And he'll sit and, you know, he's, he's quite happy to show you something like this where the land is arising right in front of your eyes, up and down, even this mountain in the background, which he makes a made a big deal about. You can see the massive difference in this peninsula here. And yet they're going to turn around and tell you that the same kind of thing can be happening at the end of the Isle of Man. And there's a, obviously this is a huge difference here. So that's one way he's been a total fucking hypocrite. And then the other thing he references is this video by Fouquet Word who tried to claim this was what was happening with Soundwave's footage to create the curve. Now, this comes back to another part of the argument that these dickheads have been making with people like Paul Voigt. Was where they, uh, I remember hearing one a while back where suddenly they decided that you had to have a change in medium in order to get refraction and then they were asking, like, well, where's the change in medium? As if this is all air, so you can't get a change in medium, therefore you can't get refraction. Yeah, this is coming, you know, we know that's not the case, but this is coming from somebody who specifically used this video and that video to try and argue for refraction. So it's another way he's kicked himself in the arse with this. I just wanted to get that in there well remembered. Um, so coming back to that, the, the effects. I went to a place and I took an observation. And it's looking over this corner and the, the distance between the camera and the buildings in the background is 10 miles and to this piece here it's 5 miles uh, some of you have maybe seen this but anyway the point is that this I went back to the same place and I got different results because this time there was uh, more mirage, more refraction <clears throat> excuse me and I uh, asked soundly to help me out and do a blink test for me now i'm just going to play this and let you guys see it for yourselves so that was the original that's the the one with the mirage the original the one with the mirage all right now if i pause it for a second we'll look at the original you can see that it's nice and clear the the beauty of this observation is you can see the water level and still see that the stuff behind is sunk below it and this is low tide because you see all this stuff's exposed You've got the water line. So this was why I love, you know, this particular observation was a good one to begin with because you had the actual low tide water level right in front of your face and you can't deny it. And yet f another five miles away in the background, you've got a whole street disappearing. So it's a great observation. But when it comes to repeating it, this is what I'm getting when I've got this effect, what these idiots call dirty air. So let's... You know, look at a couple of points here. When it switches between the two, let me just put it back a bit. When it switches between the two, you'll notice that the actual water level isn't a problem. So that's the first clue that the effect is happening in the air itself and doesn't affect the main horizon that you would concentrate on. The other thing to look at, if I just put it back again before it gets to that bit where it zooms in, if you pay attention to the way all this stuff isn't just getting duplicated at the base, it's also stretching. So let's see. So again, we've got another example of the fact that the refraction that's occurring over here, the, through the air is actually raising all the stuff in the background. And that's, as I say, that's five miles between here and there. So you can see that effect happening as well. And when it zooms in, you can you know you really can't miss the mirroring that's going on. And the difference between the two. But you can really see the difference in the way it's affecting what you're seeing. So that's one aspect to it to show how <coughs> obviously the effect is occurring in the air above the water and over a distance. It's no some random wall that, that blocks your view because obviously the light is traveling through the air from five miles away 
past a point that's uh, sorry from ten miles away, past a point that's five miles away, and into the camera. <laughs> Jed, I know you're right. I, we've had this discussion before, though, mate. It's not so much for those people; it's for the other people they might affect. You know, so I, it's always good to have the opposite view out there. You know what I mean? This is why. I really, you know, I should have probably mentioned that bit properly at the beginning, but it's hard to know what to say and not to spend too much time on some stuff. But when it comes right down to it, the reason that I even bother with doing this stuff is because the, the people on YouTube, who are who, the main people that everybody are always going to encounter, the, you know, the the Wileys, the Gerrans, the Dells, the, the Oakleys and all that kind of stuff, they're all the same. They're all charlatans, liars, manipulators, they're totally dishonest they're hypocrites you know so the the last people you want to encounter if you're one of these unfortunate sort of people either interested or naive and you want to look into this stuff genuinely and you're no like all these clowns you know some somebody i know i'm not the only one there's a, few, a lot of people but you know you have to have that opposing view out there i think um so I, so for anybody that wants to doubt this, obviously, about how uh, this is affecting what you see, this is video taken on the same night with a mirage. Now this is going into sunset. You can clearly see, whoops, let me just bump that back a bit. A bit. So you can really see the mirroring effect here, <clears throat> that the bottom of the boat is being mirrored. You can see, for example, that car that's, or no, it's not a car, sorry. The thing in the background with the lights is mirrored, the houses are mirrored. You, know, you you cannot miss the fact that the mirroring is happening. But obviously the boat is moving towards the camera and if you look at it at the moment, all you can see, god damn, see that bar? Is a, a, just a direct mirror of the hull. And if I skip it in a bit when it gets a bit closer, you start to see the bow wave appearing. And as it gets closer, again, more of it's visible and being in the bow wave itself is being mirrored. So as the boat's getting closer and closer and closer, it's obviously travelling through the air towards you. And, um, you know, the whole point here with this particular bit is to show that it's actually the entire body of air that's affecting the light that's passing through it. There isn't just some magic wall that sits at some distance near the horizon. And just to really kind of prove the point, if you look at the later video, you can see it side on. It's actually quite a cool effect. There we go. It looks as if the bow wave is floating in midair. Now, obviously, as I said, there's a distance between the boat itself and everything that's happening in the background. The boat is coming closer and closer towards the camera. And then as it gets closer in, you see it's going to come past this corner. So this is mirrored. The stuff in the background is mirrored. The boat in front is mirrored. Even though it's getting closer. You know, so now, with it, now it's like, say, three, four miles away. The background's ten miles away. The corner's five miles away. And as it passes in front of the corner and starts to come in, I'm no, no longer looking towards the horizon. Just skip it in a wee bit. Even looking across that way towards the other bank, you can actually see that the bow wave is still slightly mirrored. It's just visible. So it's the entire body of air or around you, and it's how the light is passing through it. It's got nothing to do with some wall that, that blocks light. It's the complete opposite. The, the light is passing right through the air to hit your eye. It's the same with the sun setting and mirroring up on the horizon. It's because the light is passing through the air. It's just the direction it's travelling and where it ends, you know, what direction it's it's up when it hits your eye, what you see. Ah, I know what you mean, mate. I know what you mean. Um, honestly, I think that's most of the stuff that I wanted to cover. It's it's there's a million and one things you could really say about these clowns, to be honest, and it's hard to know when to stop. The main point was to show that as far as the contention over height goes, um, there's loads of 
that there's loads of lies being told about that. And the fact that Riley has recently went out supposedly with a tape measure which is no more than 20 metres long and confirmed a 35 metre height is complete and utter bollocks. So, you know, you can see the lay of the land. <clears throat> I've shown the, the kind of the way it was measured. Um, during the day, I was actually able to see the stuff to the north, which has been well identified by now. I just thought it would be nice to see some of this stuff as well, you know, because as I say, everybody's been doing this kind of analysis on computer models, and, and I wanted to get some of the stuff that's more sort of direct, physical, observable evidence. Out. And then, <clears throat> for me, the night time, the, the sunset and night time stuff really just, um, you know, tells you the, what all you need to know, to be honest. And um, I think... You've got you. You've obviously got people who are trying to, you know, make a name for themselves and keep themselves popular in flat Earth, and really, that's all they're interested in. Um, what's this? Sixty-six feet. What we wages that when you make it halfway down? <laughs> but this is the problem, right? Because you, I've shown you here the way this place is laid out, a couple, you know, from a couple of different angles. If you look at it like that, if you just look at the cliff itself, well, you're you're only getting about half of what's the overall height. And anybody that's been there fucking knows that. So to pretend that this is accurate, anybody who stands up at the top of something like that and kids themselves under it at 35 feet is just an idiot or a lying piece of shit anyway. To then go back and pretend that they only got to 35 feet when you've got all this extra height to take into account it just tells you all you need to know. It's not that we don't know that Anthony Riley is a liar. There is a reason why he's called Liley. But, you know, it's it's easy for somebody who knows the lay of the land, <clears throat> excuse me, um, to go to somebody like, you know, Oakley's no been there. Basically, the only people involved in this in any way that have been there has been myself and Miles and Liley and Runty. You know, everybody else, they're just going on hearsay. So... Without um, any specific information coming from our side, so to speak, Wiley's basically free to can tell any story he wants because if people don't go there, they can't appreciate how the place is actually laid out and where all this extra height comes from, especially in that tides out. It's ridiculous how much of a difference there is with the overall height of the beach. So, you know, it's, it's just playing on people's ignorance at the end of the day. <laughs> Uh, brilliant. But as I said, you know, you've got people at Rumpus and stuff doing, like, their own uh, type analysis and arriving at certain heights. Then you've got somebody like Miles who's been there, done a couple of different ways of measurement and arrived at a certain height. And then I've been there and physically measured it quite literally in a completely different way. And it all marries up. And then you're supposed to somehow believe the guy who supposedly through a tape measure doing it, used a trig calculator, um, lied about what he was looking at, lied about where he was standing, um, withheld evidence. I mean, you know, you really need to, be, really, really need to be lying to yourself to trust anything that comes out of the mouth of somebody like that. But you know, it, Miles has been putting all his information out piece by piece. So the information is there, you know, the more detailed information on how it's laid out, what you can see, what the measurements are, all that kind of stuff. Um, the main thing here was to show a couple of points that hadn't really been shown, more about the layout, my own specific measurements to show that they match up as well. And the nighttime stuff, as I say, the nighttime stuff combined with what else you can, the fact that you can't see what they can see. But then you take that to the nighttime stuff and show what you should be able to see at night and that none of it is there. And this is the only difference is, you know, a different elevation and high tide. Well, that works perfectly with the globe model. It means shit on a flat earth model. So as far as I'm concerned, that's, that's just the nail in the coffin for me. And it's the pe the, the aspect of it that hasn't been covered up to now, so... I think you take everything on board. I think we can all agree, really, it was debunked by several people a long time ago. But when you take everything into account, 
it's screwed every which way from Sunday, you know what I mean? Oh, you know, I'm I'm sure there'll be loads of excuses and things like that coming in the next few days. And even after after the rumpus uh, did his his presentation, um Nathan was, you know, practically wetting himself over some big discovery that had helped them made and all that, and then all of a sudden the following day he's all subdued about it. And now seemingly they're disagreeing with each other. <coughs> the story changes every day. And they're always having to backpedal on something or change the story on something. And the thing about it is it's so inconsistent that it's ridiculous. So anybody looking at it, taking a you know, looking at that overall has got to see what's really going on there. <laughs> Aye. See, you know these people too well, Jed. I think, uh, I say, the thing about it is, it's no, it's no that we don't know what to expect from them. We know they're arseholes. We just want to make sure other people know they're arseholes. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think. Was there any other crap I need to want to throw into this? Um. Honestly, I don't. I think that's pretty much it. I mean, you could go on forever about all the stupidity that's come out of Lyle's mouth in the debates. I mean, all the stuff like fucking stupidity about angular size, no being the angular size, and uh, you know, he's 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 got this ridiculous notion that he somehow cornered Paul Voigt on this um thing with the the Curie point or whatever. Which is just just an old flat earth argument from people that don't know how any of this stuff works, <clears throat> and you know it's it's really very simple. Once it's past the metal's past the Curie point, it doesn't lose conductivity. If it has conductivity, then it can have magnetism through a moving charge. So, end the fucking story. There's no argument to be had there, and there's nothing, no tests, no experiments, nothing in physics that will show that anything about that will change. If the metal can conduct electricity, it can have a magnetic field, so that's that. Aye, so I think it's time to stop waffling. It's nearly one o'clock in the morning as well, and I've got work in the morning, so Jed, Chris, Paul, and you know everybody else that showed up, thanks very much. Uh, I know I've got a bit of a fucking habit of waffling here and there, but I hope that overall the information's there. And uh, it might be useful for people that haven't seen it yet. Check it out while you're here, Jed. If you are still here. Look at that. <laughs> How's that for a picture of Elsa Craig? <laughs> Um, right guys, I'm going to quit this stream, if I can remember what the fuck I'm doing. Thanks again, we'll catch you later.